I think we've reached the point now where we're sort of at a uh, sort of at a free for all stage. There's a lot of films that are really worth talking about. Some because they're you know quite bad. Others because they're uh, significant. I mean, uh, maybe a film we should talk about is the cover of the current uh, Cinemascope. Should I get it out? Yeah, a film that I'm a, a lone dissenter on. I mean, I almost feel like Bob talking about Drive is redundant because you can just read the piece. It's but, right. uh, I don't even talk about Drive. But uh, just re read the uh, issue. Read the issue. Read the issue. Do, do Start with the cover and then turn the page inside and, you know, read the... But I mean, do, do read Mark's uh, editor's note. Definitely read Mark's editor's note. Funniest uh, page uh, in any film magazine in the world. People, and then, look, people and then always... go to the table of contents, uh, see the fabulous Crazy Horse picture, yeah. and then yeah, read the interview with Nicholas Vending Ruffin and then proceed. I mean, you know, people always talk about coming out of this festival, you know, a movie that has legs going into the fall, like, you know, is... Do you think Drive is going to have any resonance or staying power once it gets out of this kind of film festival? Well, it opens Order? Because on it's, Friday. it opens on Friday, which is why it's a relevant question. I mean, it's a very commercial film. Oh, yeah. and, do, and, and do we think it actually has I don't know those. It's that cross film. Commercial enough. I think well, that's the question. I don't know if it's that commercial. Depending, I mean, it's, it's less commercial than, you know, a large percentage of films at this film festival. Right. It has a bankable lead, somewhat bankable. I'm not can, quite sure how bankable he is. Already this point. I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't speak for the. I can't speak for the marketing in Canada, but the marketing in the U.S. for Drive is brilliant. Uh, it's had a brilliant marketing campaign, and if that means any kind of worthy translation into, you know, commercial uh, staying power, um, you know, and you make a calculation based on how the thing is promoted ahead of time, Drive could very well be um, a big hit for the fall. It could also fall in its face. Um, you know, it, it, it's a very hard film to predict. We know how it will be. I, I hope that it will be a, a big hit and it'll stay on. Did you really like it? I didn't really like it. No, neither did I. No, no, no. Um, but Bob, I read your piece, well, the intro at least, and being from LA, you had the, well, no, I read the whole piece, but the intro is uh, the critically evaluative stuff. Um, Yes. But where, because you're from yes, LA, yeah, you yeah. have a you know you have a closer connection to the way that it sort of scans the city and you know uh, Gosling sort of intimate knowledge of the streets that LA films don't do when they're all about the uh, overpasses and highways and that, uh, which I found interesting. But not being from there, I couldn't really connect to. Uh, whereas being well, from, the, the, whereas the, being from Toronto, we can talk about the geography and. But Take this waltz. Well, the thing well, is, to the, yeah, but to follow up on that, John, I mean, the, the connection in is with Ruffin's whole concept, and he's a director who is willing to talk about his thematics, and he says correctly, and argues correctly in the interview, that the drive is, the foundations of Drive are in fairy tale. And one of the interesting things in the film is how it um, absorbs the complexities of Los Angeles um, visually um, so that you have, you create these idyllic moments in the most unlikely spots, like where the concrete Los Angeles River ends and the wild river takes over. I'm always, and very, I'm always very wary of films that present themselves as fairy tales. Like, what about the Dardenne? Like, 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 like Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, yeah, I, but the film doesn't. It doesn't present itself no, as a fairy tale. Was, you you, but there was a you way, discover that for but there, yourself. But there was a way he was talking, and by the way, it's a very good interview you did with him, even though I don't like the movie very much. There's a way that he's talking with the film. I think he's too willing to talk about it. It indicates that there's not really that much there because he, 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 he really needs to explain it. He, really, he, he pumps it up. And I thought no, that... No, That's not true. I, I, think, I think it's pumped up. I think it's a film that in order to be successful, or the movies that it wishes it was successful in the same vein as, I think are quite stripped down. And I think it's quite pumped up. I found it a very ostentatious film, and some and he's obviously very talented. And there's great talent in the frames and the coloring and the, the the use of space and movement in this film. But to me, it's very ostentatious. I feel like I'm watching the director as star, and a lot of the time, maybe that I think can you're be. Talking about Rising. I may be talking about Valhalla Rising, but I feel like I'm also talking about Drive because to me, the thematics of it. The idea of a hard-shelled, armored, professional killer developing these sort of possessive, nurturing feelings towards a woman who he can't settle down with, that's like Michael Mann, but that's not a compliment. It's, I've seen that before. And to me, the way that it's expressed with all of these 80s touches, including that great song on the opening credits, I don't know, that's just kind of snarky to me. It's not really, uh, I, I, I didn't find it transporting. I can admire the craft of it, and I didn't hate it as much as some, you know, another 
writer for this magazine, but I'm just surprised because, you know, you're a really smart critic and Mark really likes it as well. It just left me so cold. I wonder if I was being unfairly hostile to the movie. It just seems... Yeah, I think you are. Yeah? If I may say yeah, about that song, yes. yeah. the I, song, though, I have not been able to stop listening to since seeing the film yeah. and does most of the emotional and thematic heavy lifting for it, I think, but in a way that kind of works, and it's also impossibly infectiously Well, that's one of the things, one of the many pleasures of Drive is that in the context of Refn's previous films, and this ties in with the Pusher trilogy, I think, most directly of his previous films, much like Alps connects in with Kinetta, it's like you have this thing where filmmakers are, are referencing or playing through themes and ideas, not from their most immediate preceding film, but from previous, previous films. And I think that's kind of interesting how they're going, jumping back into their body of work to re-explore things. Ch Ch Chalen does that too in his fairy tale, which he calls a fairy tale once upon a time. No, but the thing is, it's the drive. I, I think you could pull nine out of ten people um, who exit the screenings of drive. Do you think this was a fairy tale? And it wouldn't have even struck them until they were asked that question. And then they, they might think, well, maybe it was, uh, but it doesn't announce itself as that. I think 9 out of 10 people might vote for Drive for the TIFF Audience Award. Uh, maybe. I, I actually doubt that, but um, there are not enough, you know, um, there's there's not enough stars in Drive. There's All stars. Brian Cranston's huge. No, yeah, no, no, stars, star stars. I'm not Mulligan. Doing. No, 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 but I mean, Ron I mean, no, 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 above the full front page Toronto star stars. No, it no. is interesting, though, as a film no. for Gosling's ostensible star turn that it's, it's right. you know, it has maybe aspirations of being commercial as well as aspirations of being very art filmy. Um, but it's well, and, 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 you know, it's aware of itself. I mean, Albert Brooks's character actually references the film the European internally. Films, yes, yeah, I mean, right. yeah, it has a... Also, I think you ha it, it, what's been under uh, considered in it is the screenplay, and how the screenplay itself represents a, a tremendous rethinking of the original novel source, which was a very different kind of hard-boiled um, story in which the basic elements are preserved for the final film, but the narrative and the structure is completely rethought. And the, 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 this screenplay is a, is a fascinating study in how to adapt a novel to the screen and rethinking every single aspect like of the original Rick source. Like what, was, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. was the character in the novel of the husband also named Standard? Because that's really funny. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, there, the, the, the female character in this is far more fleshed out than in the uh, uh, novel source. And, the driver's um, chatty in the novel. Right? He's not the yes, he's very talkative. Yeah, Driver is very talkative in the novel. Thank, good, thank goodness he made him a worthless man of action because I've never seen that before. Yeah, in anything. I mean, he has three jobs. Except too. every other movie. How many characters have uh, handle three jobs? Moonlighting and daylighting. Yeah, yeah. Moonlighting, <laughs> moonlighting and daylighting. Busy guy. Is there anywhere useful to go from Drive? I mean, Los Angeles. No, I mean, when you were talking about the geography of Los Angeles, I mean, there's there were a lot of Toronto references in, in films this year at the Toronto Film Festival. We pointed out Alps. Uh, Alps has a pretty funny... Which also has Los Angeles references. Toronto reference and Los Angeles references. Uh, Take This Waltz is kind of a series of uh, Toronto references, Toronto cities, Toronto scenes, and uh, an Egoyan-esque commitment to, uh, to civic... Bogus geography. To, to, to slightly bogus civic geography. I mean, there's a scene where they're taking the... Uh, you know, they're, they're heading east on Queen Street, and then all of a sudden they're on college, and then they're back on Queen. And as a friend oh, pointed yeah. out, like, you could have said they're taking the long way. It's a way to show off the city instead. But I mean, I guess no one outside of Toronto is going to yeah. notice it. Am I the only one here who saw it take this? Well, you saw it. You saw it, yeah. You, you did not. Yeah, sort of a... Well, it's interesting what Bob was saying about Drive, because I wish we could have a Toronto... We had it last year with... Uh, you Are Here. You Are Here, Dan Cockburn's right. film, which right. made like a concerted effort to hide the city in this really Coburn. productive way. <laughs> Coburn. Co what did I say? Cockburn? Cockburn. Yeah. Cockburn. Uh, we'll edit that out. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> um, sorry, Dan. We love you. But I feel like Torontonians are so anxious about this because we have this expectation that like narrative can't unfold in Toronto, so we're always trying to debunk it at every turn. I mean, you know, and I, I spoke with Dan about this before, but it's hard to imagine New Yorkers saying, there's the Empire State Building, or sort of doing this indexing of local geography when they watch films. But that said, that someone like Sarah Pauly or Adam McGoyan with Chloe are so eager to kind of lay their uh, postcards on the table 
uh, it kind of kind of spoils it and kind of makes it feel like the city is being sold as a tourist ad, which feels doubly insidious when it's going on during the film festival. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to talk with people that take this well because I, I wrote about it for the website and I didn't like it, but like I don't think it's a dishonorable failure or anything. I think that... Uh, Seth in, Rogen is fantastic. Rogen's really good. I think that in some ways Away From Her was a total prefab package deal. Like you take that material, you take that author, the casting was really good and she didn't really bring much to it as a director. Even though it's a good film, she kind of just brought it off. I thought that this is much more personal and revealing and in some ways I guess it, you know, she's really putting herself out there even as she claims that it doesn't have that personal connection. But I don't know, I thought it was less than the previous one even while it was being more. I don't know if you agree quickly. Uh, yeah, I thought it was middling. I thought it was, yeah. I have no particular opinion. Didn't care for it. Didn't find it particularly offensive. Um, although I do find it offensive that they suggest that a rickshaw jockey can afford the only unconverted loft space in the city of Toronto yeah. which do not even exist yeah, he's not only a rickshaw jockey he also paints tremulous yeah. pictures of people's souls yeah. in pencil and ink that's not yeah you're good. right I didn't like the film at all <laughs> leave it there